Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got the Ksun M3 programming software to uh, show you. Now, as I uh, mentioned in the previous video, I was going to run through this and uh, hopefully help a few people out because uh, the programming software isn't available on the Ksun website, or at least I can't find it anyway. And I needed to contact the seller on AliExpress to try and get a copy of this. Anyway, luckily they responded to me and sent me a zip file with the software inside, so we got it sorted in the end. But uh, Interestingly enough, since I did that first video, uh, they've updated their listing on the AliExpress site and now you can buy these radios with the USB Type-C cable, so I think that's a pretty much an essential purchase at the same time. Now, the two radios that you can see here, this is the M3 uh, with the USB-C option, is available for $47 and you can also buy the radio without as well, there's a pair of radios, the uh, KSM3s, uh, uh, sorry that's the twos, there's the threes. $44, uh, but for the extra 3 or $4, you might as well get the USB-C programming cable. It makes a lot more sense, really, and uh, you don't need to contact the seller separately like I had to do, so uh, good job they've updated the listing now, so well worth the extra money there if you can uh, do that at the same time as you uh, buy some of these. I notice you can also buy the radios with a pair of uh, black and white options now. Um, I, the ones I got sent through were like uh, that deep blue colour and I thought I was buying the black last time so don't be surprised if they turn up and it's actually blue rather than uh, black. It'd be nice to see them in the black option though but uh, anyway there you go so I just thought I'd give you a little update there on that. So today what we're going to do is have a little look at this programming software. Now on the M3 side of things uh, this is what the seller sent through to me. They emailed me this uh, zip file through. And if you're running Windows 10, you can just unzip this automatically using the built-in uh, decompression tool. Or in my case, I prefer to use uh, 7-zip. So I'm just going to extract the file. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you'll see that, uh, there we go, you get X30M3 uh, with some pretty garbled looking characters. And I'm assuming it's some sort of Chinese character set. So I'm going to show you, show you this because uh, I got a little bit stuck here. I tried to run the software and this is what happened straight away. I got unexpected error, please check file access permissions, but it, actually it's nothing much to worry about, it's basically just a Chinese character set. So we're going to go ahead and rename this file uh, back to just something like uh, M3, doesn't really matter what you call it, just to get this going and everything. So now you should find that the software does run. Now this is also where I had a problem before, uh, sometimes depending if you've got antivirus software or anti-malware software, these kind of things are blocked. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the m3.exe, see if it works first time. And as you can see there, it just didn't do anything at all. Uh, compatibility settings have been applied. So maybe a lot of these uh, programs are made from very old versions of uh, Windows software. So they don't work with like Windows 8, Windows 10, anything like that. So it's applied some compatibility settings. Let's see if we can run the program now. You may find that uh, this is what happens. Uh, so we're going to say, yeah. Go ahead and we're going to install the software. I'm just going to use the default location to do that. So if that doesn't work for you, sometimes running it as administrator also helps, but um, a lot of people have said they can't find this software anywhere on the internet. So what I'm going to do after I've done this video is I'm going to stick it on a, a download link and if you look in the comments on YouTube or the video description, we'll we'll get the software uploaded so you can also grab a copy because it's quite hard to find. Now, you'll notice it doesn't actually say M3, it says KDC 70 Pro 1.38. Now, I think uh, they've adapted this software from uh, another radio, uh, possibly another manufacturer's software even. I, I don't really know much about it, but uh, it seems very odd that it comes up with that name when I can't really find many references to that particular radio on the internet. Anyway, we'll go ahead and we've installed that. What I'm going to do now is find it, and strangely enough, it appears on my menu as C70 Pro. So I'm going to run that now. And this is your next surprise. What you're going to see here is, um, yeah, more characters uh, in Chinese, which isn't very helpful. Now, don't panic again. Uh, this will save you some time. Just go up to this menu here. S is for settings, which has got the letter S at the end of there. And L is for language. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch it to English. So if you haven't got the Chinese character set on your machine, it's going to come up just all garbled like that. So what we're going to do is go down to here, English. We're going to OK that with the OK button, believe it or not. And there you go, it looks a bit more sensible now, doesn't it? There you go. So uh, you can at least get it into some sort of uh, uh, format that we can all read now anyway. So that's cool. 
So, next thing to do before we actually start uh, trying to connect up the radio is we're going to have to plug in the programming cable. Now, you don't need any drivers on Windows 10. I don't know if that's the case with Windows 7. I'm guessing it'll probably be the same. Uh, but basically, it will pull drivers from Windows Update. And I can show you this actual process because this machine's been reinstalled recently and I've not put on the uh, programming software before. That's why I can show you guys this. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to plug the cable in. And in a second, uh, Windows should detect it. So we're looking for a COM port number in the device manager. So let's just go down to here into device manager. And what we're going to see hopefully is that it's installed it. And here we go. And as you can see, they're prolific USB to serial COM port 3. Now, those drivers were automatically installed by Windows Update. I had to pause the video a minute ago because it didn't register the first time I plugged the cable in. So I just disconnected the cable from the USB port, connected it back up, and then everything seemed to work okay. So, uh, yeah, if it doesn't work for your first time, just try it again the second time round, and it will probably install the driver okay. So you don't need to go and download any drivers. Just make sure you connect it to the internet, and uh, Windows Update will pull the driver for the prolific USB. So, COM port 3 is what we're looking for. So we can now close that down. We're going to go to settings, and then we're going to go to communication port, and we're going to choose COM 3. Now you might have more of these COM ports available on your machine depending on what you've got plugged in. If you've got different programming leads, <coughs> you may already find that uh, COM3 is already in use. So um, yeah, we're going to select that anyway. Okay, that. And we're going to try reading the data from the radio. So there's several ways you can do it. You can just hit on the uh, icon up here for reading. And we can read from the radio. So make sure the radio is powered up, the USB ports uh, connected and the uh, cables inserted into the radio. Let's click OK. And so uh, this is another thing that happened to me when I first tried this. And um, yeah, the read password is wrong. So I had to get back in touch with the seller because these radios are actually password protected uh, from the factory for some crazy reason. So that's another weird thing that goes on with them. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to save you all the hassle and I'm going to let you know that the password uh, for programming these radios, let's close that down a minute. The password we need is 753951. Now, why it's that password, I don't know. That's the one that the seller gave me. They gave me two wrong passwords initially, then they gave me that one. So, presumably, all the radios from the factory are set with the same password. So, if yours doesn't work with this, then you're going to have to get in touch with the seller and ask why they set some kind of password for programming, I don't know. But uh, 753951 is the password we need in this one going to hit the read and we're going to say OK and it looks like we've got success and the radio is going to beep at the end after it's transferred data there you go so it's all done so now at this point don't click OK again because it will just keep on reading the same data so we're going to just close that down close it with the X and you can see now uh, here's some of the data that I've put in uh, I programmed up the PMR446 channels in the EU so you've got 1 to 16 there uh, you can program CTCSS and DCS. So I've been asked if these radios are suitable for use on the 77's amateur radio band and do they support uh, split frequency transmit? And the answer is yes they do actually. Uh, as you can see from the software here you can program an RX frequency and a TX frequency. So I'm just going to show you briefly how this actually works. Dead easy. So we're going to take a theoretical repeater on the UK channel uh, RU66 uh, using a CTCSS tone of 88.5. So we're simply going to program into the RX there. We're going to put the repeater's output frequency. So in this case, 430.825. And you'll see that the TX frequency is also changed to the same value there, but we need to modify that uh, to the repeater's input, which is 438.425 in this case. And we're going to set the CTCSS as 88.5 hertz. And you'll notice that when I move off this box here, it automatically fills in the encode and decode. There is 88.5 on this side as well. And that's basically it. Once you've chosen wide or narrow modulation and low or high power, but bear in mind, I don't think the low and high power toggle seems to work uh, with this particular variant of the radio's firmware. So you're probably gonna be stuck in high power anyway. And I wouldn't bother changing any of the settings really. That should just work straight off. Then once you've made all the changes you need to your file, uh, we're just going to write it back to the radio. So we're just going to hit the write button and OK that. And that's basically it. That is all there is to programming the repeater up. Now bear in mind you've only got 16 channels, so you're not going to fill in too much. But if it's just a few local repeaters that you want to hit, then 
when you're out and about, nice little radio in your pocket and everything, and that should do the trick. And there you go, that's the confirmation beep that the radio is finished. And then the radio reboots and comes back up there. And that's ready for use on that channel now. So that's as simple as it gets. There's no problem at all really with regards to programming up the repeaters or anything. It does support DCS as well, if that's what you need. So there could be used for some PMR applications too. Uh, the only other thing I noticed in the software, just before I finish this uh, little uh, review here, is that, that you can lock the frequency range to just 446 which would indicate that these radios are obviously marketed as a license-free variant as well. And I happen to notice while flicking through the internet that um, Retivis have brought out a version of this radio that looks identical in the blue colour, both for FRS and um, also for the PMR446 spec in the EU. Uh, presumably they are also power limited to 0.5 watts. Would be interesting to know if they can be unlocked using this software. So if anybody out there's got one, do, do leave some comments and let us know. And likewise, if you do know of any other software that might be better than this, that can control more aspects of the radio, then just uh, also drop us a, a direct message or, or leave a comment in there, because I'd be really interested to see myself. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed that little look at the programming software. Like I say, it's very basic, there's not much to it. Hopefully the video's just saved you going through some of the pitfalls that I did with regards to the password and also the software not running properly when I tried to install it initially. So uh, hopefully uh, that's been of some interest to you all. We'll see you in the next video then. Take care for now. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.